Rum Tug Tugger is having a baby. Now, I would normally be happy about one of my sims having a little semen demon and bringing said demon in the world. But it's kinda hard to do that when you don't know who the demon's father is. Zayden Kibo, Rhea Seahorn's soulmate and boyfriend of several simsiers, or his brother, Dexter Kibo, the hotter, nicer, younger one, we don't know, and neither does she. But you best believe she's gonna tell herself it's Zayden's. As she looked at her precious nieces, Aurora and Oasis Kilo, her. Post aging up to toddlers, she came to the conclusion that the fetus she was carrying inside of her had to be the love of her life. Zayden's. Gush, a little Zayden, a little sin that's half herself and half her soulmate. She couldn't help but smile as she thought about her son or daughter. If they'd take Zayden's black hair or her red hair, if they'd be a human or a werewolf, if they knew already how loved they were, she couldn't wait to become a mother, and she couldn't wait to tell the love of her life Zayden tonight after work, and everybody else, she was going to go all out for this baby, a shower, a gender reveal, everything. Um, Oasis, why are you outside in the freezing cold? In fact, how did you even get out there? I love how Autumn and Shanna have to completely different parenting styles. Red Velvet Cupcakes headed to her bedroom to gaze at her non-existent baby bump. You would be the type of sitch to do this. Aunt Shantam was working on potty training the twins, which reminded Rocket Launcher how she was going to have to learn so much about babies and parenting. Thank goodness she has her sister and her father around, but who she really needed around was Zayden, because finding out about her pregnancy had her woohoo drive through the roof. Besides that, all that was on her mind was the precious little Zayden growing inside of her. Oh wonderful, Chris, enough about rescinded driver's license. Today would be Sage's first day of elementary school. He was keen on making a bunch of friends, getting the best grades possible, and maintaining his spellcasting studies all at the same time. He knew he had a lot to juggle, and just as Autumn's work day was about to begin, she got a promotion. She was now a level for civil designer, or an installation intern, venturing into the green technician branch of her career. One thing she loved about her job was the flexibility. Having a hybrid job was essential to her, as she wanted to spend lots of time with her daughters during these very important years of their lives. She'd learned a bit more about them. Oasis, like Autumn, was in favor of the outdoors. She found herself drawn into nature, the snow, and her mother's plants, eager to explore her new world as a toddler. Our air, on the other hand, was the complete opposite. Aurora had no interest in the outdoors or nature. She found herself more fascinated with her toys or appliances around the house. Autumn kind of hoped that would change. Being outdoorsy is a part of who she is. Ha, huh? interesting. Razor Burn has been in the marine biology field for a while. And now, Dexter has joined it. Seems like the two of them have a lot more in common than they thought. But to bad rebuke is pregnant by Zayden. And while Oasis was outside destroying her mama's plants, Christopher came outside to test something out on her. Oh shit. Oasis is actually not a human. She is a full-blooded werewolf. Christopher was dumbfounded. He could normally smell a fellow werewolf from a mile away, but he was unable to detect the scent on Oasis until she became a toddler. He was thrilled to have another werewolf in the family, a youngin that he could teach the ways of the wolf lifestyle to. Though, he wondered how Autumn would handle this. He knew she didn't care for the werewolf lifestyle, and raising one certainly wasn't no walk in the park. Oh, that's quite the invention you've made, Rora. Well, at least she's happy. Why is everyone so strict to Oasis? What do you all know that I don't? Christopher had done a good job avoiding thinking about his late wife and our founder, Alexis Volkov, for quite some time. He would travel to an extremely dark headspace any time he thought of her. He hadn't even mustered up the strength to visit her grave yet. But he couldn't help but feel overwhelmed as he played with Oasis. Why hadn't he detected she was a wolf the moment she was born? Why did she barely look like Shanna and mainly like Autumn, who looked a lot like her mother. Oasis wasn't even supposed to exist. 
And that's right around the time his daughter-in-law Shanna woke up. She needed to be energized. Because her and Autumn had a lot to do today. Shanna was taking Autumn to her hometown of Evergreen Harbor to show her around and fill her in on important information about the city. Since they were looking to move and raise their children here, it was important for Autumn to know everything there is to know about Evergreen Harbor. And Shanna had a lot to tell. First, they started with the only community center left in town in Conifer Station, grabbing some coffee before chatting at the table. Shanna explained what it had to offer, cafes, an arcade, a gym, a rec room, and a bunch of vendors surrounding the space selling handmade and upcycled items. Something Shanna thought Autumn would be interested in. It's a hotspot for kids. She used to come here all the time with her brothers when they were younger, and the whole lot is made out of shipping containers containers, making it super eco-friendly. Evergreen is very LGBT-friendly, progressive, diverse, and safe. Her brothers have never felt unsafe or discriminated against while living here. She wanted Autumn to know that considering she's mixed race like Shanna's brothers. Autumn was loving everything Shanna was saying. This seemed like such a wonderful place to raise their family and grow old. She would definitely have to get used to the sounds of cars and newer buildings. But she was more optimistic than pessimistic about the change, though Shanna admitted there was one exception to her statement about Evergreen being safe. There's something about the city that no one else besides its citizens and some of Henford Don Bagley's citizens know about, and it has to do with that church that Alexis Volkov's funeral was held in. What? Is it some type of cult? Autumn joked. Well, yeah, it is. Shanna wasn't going to blame Ezra or Edward for hosting Alexis's funeral in a cult's church. They didn't know any better. But God, did she wish that they would have contacted her first. Because now, Autumn's family is on their radar. Shanna? What the fuck? Autumn was distraught. Why on earth would she want to move their family to Evergreen Harbor if there's an active cult here? Shanna told her wife to relax. Did Autumn really think that if she thought these sims were actually dangerous, Shanna would recommend their family move here? She knows these sims. Let her explain. The cult that owns that church is called Worship of the Watcher. It's a pretty big congregation. It has at least 100 members. And its members live mainly in Conifer Station and Henford Don Bagley. Very few members live in Grimm's Quarry. The neighborhood they'd be living in due to that part of town being much more vocal about their distaste for the cult. Members of the cult have very mundane lifestyles. They dress simple and modest. Lacking bright colors and distracting patterns. They eat food and use items that they make from scratch. The men typically work blue-collar jobs or for the cult, and the women are almost always stay-at-home wives. Some members don't listen to music or celebrate birthdays. The members typically have very conservative values, including homophobia, but she's never heard of anything violent happening to an LGBT sim in Evergreen Harbor at the cult's hand. But the main thing about the cult that makes them so odd and stand out from everyone else is their main belief. They believe that they are being constantly watched and controlled by a mythical, godlike creature. Their book describes incidents of sims being in swimming pools and their ladders suddenly disappearing, or their seemingly healthy relationships suddenly vanishing as if they never existed, or being pushed to work on a skill until exhaustion, almost like they have no bodily autonomy of their own. Isn't that so weird? Yeah. Shanna, so weird, anyways, members of what non-members call the Watcher believe that if they stay on their best behavior, they won't be punished by their god. The Watcher, anything unnatural they deem as bad behavior, including associating with the cults of any kind, doing drugs, and, yes, being gay, any excuse to be homophobic, I guess. Shana once again reassured Autumn. These sims are not dangerous. They mainly congregate within their own communities and are non-violent with outsiders. They may get the occasional knock on the door with a member trying to recruit new sims. But besides that, they pretty much mind their business. Regardless of these sims, she still loves Evergreen Harbor and still fully believes that it's the perfect place to raise their family. They shouldn't let these freaks scare them into submission. You know what? 
Shanna was right. Autumn has never once felt the need to hide the fact that she's a lesbian and wasn't going to start now. They should move here if them existing as a couple bothers them so much. Perhaps being here would help push the members of the Watcher out completely. The sun was beginning to set, but before heading back to Moonwood Mill, Shanna wanted to stop by her old apartment and visit her brothers. The first brother she ran into was her youngest one, Voldemar, who had just aged up to a teen. It was so bittersweet for Shanna to see her little brother all grown up. She asked if everyone else was home, and they were. Everyone greeted each other and got to talking, Autumn a bit distracted by Shanna's and Zayden's secret handshake. Her wife's relationship with her brother reminded her of her own relationship with Ezra. It was precious to see the two of them caught up, Shanna asking Zayden about how things were going with her sister-in-law Rizardavos and work. Autumn was getting to know Voldemar a bit better. Soon after, Dexter joined the conversation, sitting on the couch with everyone. Shanna had missed her baby brother so much, she seriously could not wait to move back here. Only being a two-minute walk away from all of them felt like a dream. She couldn't wait to have them over all the time and continue watching each and every one of them grow. <laughs> oh. Hey, resale price. What are you doing here? She was surprised to see Autumn and Shanna here, but they were just leaving, which was perfect, because she came all this way to speak to Zayden privately about something, and she told him that right in front of Dexter, who conveniently sat himself at the computer to overhear everything, remember the Elamo knew he was snooping. So Zayden took her to the same community center in Conifer Station that his sister took Autumn to earlier, and that's when she told him, and to her surprise, Zayden was actually thrilled about the news. You were stressing about taking care of your brothers and you want to take care of a whole ass baby. I do not understand this man. Whatever, Russell Thorpe was so happy, happy about her pregnancy and happy that Zayden was also excited about it. She couldn't believe it, they're going to be parents. And she couldn't think of a better man to have her first child with. Girl, I certainly could. They celebrated with lots of flirting before Zayden asked for something a bit more intimate and in public too. I guess they really want to enjoy their last few nights before they become parents.